Welcome to the Science 360 Tour. I am Rin. I'm a senior physics major here at Kenyon. I'm also getting a minor in math and a concentration in scientific computing. Hello, my name is Radaba Rahim. I'm a junior molecular biology major at Kenyon and also on the pre-med track. And I will be your co-tour guide for today. So we're going to get started. This is a 360 tour, which means that you can click and drag on your screen to look around as we go through the different spaces. All right, so we are just heading off of Middle Path now and walking towards the Science Quad. The sciences at Kenyon are very connected. You'll see that as we go through some of the buildings, three of the four buildings are connected. Um, and it's just very reflective of how we really do. You don't just do one thing at Kenyon. When you're there, even if you're in the sciences, you're interacting with people all the time. So our first building here that we are approaching is Samuel Mather, which is our psych and neuroscience building. So we will enter in here and start to look at some of our spaces where we will do our sciences. So as we enter Sam Mather Hall, you'll see that we have a main computer lab that is available for students. And all of the computer labs at Kenyon are equipped with all the software that students might need for science-based classes, like our studio, Maple Origin, um, and physics majors actually receive their own Mac laptops with all of their software in there. And then as we walk down the hall, you'll see some other different classrooms. We're actually approaching a one of our main lecture halls in Sam Mather, one of two larger lecture halls in this building, um, both of which are on opposite ends are actually twins of each other. So now we're heading up to the third floor of Sam Mather Hall. Up here on the third floor, we are going to enter into one of our student lounges. These lounges are all over the science quad on pretty much every floor of every building. There's at least one space for students to gather, um, relax between classes, work on group projects, take a study break. And now as we head across the hall here, we'll enter into one of our smaller classrooms where um, you'll have upper level courses with fewer people, more discussion based. You'll notice there's also a whiteboard. Um, a lot of times students will use these classrooms when they're not in session just to work through problems together. It's a very collaborative sense. Now we're going to head on over to Professor Peterson's zebrafish lab and see what's going on there. Sam Mather is also home to many animal research labs in both neuroscience and psychology. We're actually currently in Professor Peterson's molecular neuroscience lab, and she studies multiple sclerosis in um, zebrafish models. There's also other professors that work with rodent models, such as Professor Millen, who investigates the effects of environmental manipulations on drug seeking and tolerance. Many professors at Kenyon um, conduct research on the side of teaching, but very much split their time between teaching and research. It's not like professors feel that they need to be doing research all the time or teaching all the time, and students feel like they can approach professors very easily when thinking about doing research. All right, now we're going to head across the quad. All right, so we are now entering into the center of our quad. On the right, we have Hayes Hall, which houses our math and physics departments. Straight ahead, we have Tomsic, which is our chemistry building. And to the left, we have Higley Hall, which houses biology. This quad is often full of students. There's almost always a Frisbee game going on if it's nice out. There will be students just outside studying, relaxing, chatting with friends. On a typical day, you'll see Adirondack chairs and picnic tables full of students just, again, enjoying the company, enjoying being outside. And now we're going to head into Higley Hall, which, as I mentioned before, houses our biology department. We are now entering Higley Hall, and this is actually the Fishman Wing of Higley Hall. It's a renovated wing with new classrooms, of um, a couple new study spaces, as well as um, some new renovated labs for our professors. As you can see, there's a lot of um, research going on in the biology building from our posters or student posters that are hung up on the walls. Actually, just to the right, we have the office of Professor Hicks. 
um, who researches asexual reproduction in moss. Now let's head over down the hall to Higley Auditorium. So before we go into Higley Auditorium, I just wanted to point out our butterfly project here, which is actually part of our introductory lab sequence. Um, the butterfly project is in partnership with the Brown Family Environmental Center down the road, and all intro students collect either a sample of a butterfly or a moth, um, and they look at biodiversity of butterflies in the region, as well as um, do some molecular work in identifying species and genus. Higley Auditorium is our largest lecture hall on campus. Rarely is it seen full other than for visiting speakers and faculty meetings. It is also home to our introductory biology lecture sequence. Um, IntroBio is actually our largest class in the biology department. It ranges up to 40 to 50 students. However, upper level classes in the biology department are typically around 20 students and are um, sometimes even in Higley Auditorium. So you'll never see past the first two rows full in this building. Now we're gonna head over to our greenhouse. Here we have our greenhouse, which is attached to one side of Higley Hall. The greenhouse is actually open for students to work in. One of my friends who is a bio minor is working in the greenhouse and enjoys getting to just work with professors who have plants that they are doing research with stored in the greenhouse. Now we're going to head on up to one of our molecular biology labs. So right now we are entering Wade Powell's molecular toxicology lab. This is one of many of labs that is in, in Higley Hall for upper class students who do research for credit or on a voluntary basis. Uh, this is one of our molecular based labs. We have labs that range from macro to micro. So we have a microbiology lab, we have an um, evolution studies lab, we have an aquatic biology lab. Um, so students in the biology department can research almost anything that they or find interesting. Now we're gonna go head on over to Tomsic Hall. So as Rodava mentioned earlier, there's a lot of research going on in the science quad. To your left here, we have many more of our research posters, which you can see in every building across the quad. Um, research is a really big part of the Kenyan science experience. There are many summer programs that allow students to do research. We have the summer science research, which is aimed at students who know what they want to research. They work with a professor to draft a proposal and will get funding and housing for the summer to do research for 10 weeks with the professor. We also have the Cascade program, which is aimed at students who do not have prior research experience and professors will provide entry level projects that students can get experience doing research with again over a 10 week period during the summer. So now we will continue on our walk over to Tomsic. So next we're going to head upstairs um, to the third floor of Tomsic Hall where you'll find a lot of research labs in the chemistry department as well as a lot of chemistry professors offices. Professors typically are um, supposed to have five office hours a week, but usually they extend beyond that and you can email them at any point in time that you need to get in touch and learn something or ask questions. Um, I know I typically go to my advisor's office hours pretty often and usually I book a 15 minute appointment and end up leaving like an hour and a half later, <laughs> which is very typical of Kenyan. Now we're actually in um, Professor Mo Hunson's lab and he studies carbs, specifically sugars, and how to synthesize new types of sugar molecules and um, synthesizing molecules related to cancer. Um, so a lot of organic synthesis happens in this lab. So entering into Hayes Hall, which has our math and physics departments. We are currently on the third floor of Hayes, which is predominantly math. We just passed one of the office spaces with several offices arranged around a common space that has whiteboards where you'll oftentimes see students 
working. Um, it was really helpful, one of my math classes, to be able to just go there, work through problems on the whiteboard with another student. When we got stuck, could just stick our heads into our professor's office and be like, hey, we don't know what we're doing, come help. He was always more than happy to come out and work through what we had done so far on the whiteboard, help steer us in the right direction. As we continue down the hall, we will look in at one of our classrooms. This classroom actually has computers in it as well. Oftentimes, math classes will use softwares such as Maple to do um, different plotting or to look at the math concepts in a different way. So it's often helpful to have computers as part of the classroom setup. So now we're looking in at the Cosmo Lab, which is on the second floor. It's part of our physics department. This is actually the lab that I work in. So we do um, lots of different cosmology related stuff. Everything from very, very early universe to looking at dark matter, dark energy, different theories of gravity. It's a very interesting, lots of computer simulations. The physics department at Kenyon, like all the science departments, is a very close-knit community. Um, we have physics colloquium every Friday where we'll have a speaker come in and talk about their research um, and students have a chance to just sit in, listen to that talk, eat lunch, ask questions, really just get excited about the physics going on. It's a community. People will be in haze at all hours just talking, working on problem sets together, learning new stuff. That was what really drew me to Kenyon for the community of the physics department. So now we're gonna head down to one of our labs that's in the basement. This is an experimental lab where they are using lasers and optical cooling to trap atoms and look at the Rydberg blockade and the excitement of it. So this is an important concept for quantum computing and things of that nature. Here we have the table set up with all of the lasers and optics that are necessary to get the experiment working correctly. Students have played a big part in designing that layout and setting it up and are now helping to run the experiment at any given point. There are about two to three students working in this lab with Professor Reinhardt. That wraps up our tour of the Science Quad. Thank you all so much for joining and coming along on this virtual tour. If you want more information or are, have any questions, please feel free to look at the description below for more information, as well as the contact info for the admissions office. Thanks again, and we hope to see you on campus for real sometime in the future.